DNA. It's kind of the thing that makes us what we are. And today I'm gonna to show you how you can make it very simply in Blender using geometry nodes. Now this is the setup here, as you can see. And it's actually a lot simpler than it looks. Don't be intimidated here. I'm gonna go step by step. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now the main focus here is making the actual DNA. I will quickly just show you how to do the random material like you see there with the instances and just do a little bit of lighting but mainly you can kind of render it however you want the main focus in here is actually making the dna now i will upload this blend file which is my original to patreon so those of you supporting the channel there will be getting access to that but i've said enough let's jump in and make some dna in blender it's going to be a ton of fun so we're going to keep things really simple we're just going to jump into a new document in blender and we'll just select the default cube honestly you could use any mesh object doesn't matter mainly we just want to jump over here to our geometry node um, workspace context whatever you want to call it and what i'm going to do just for your sake you could just stay in this sort of workspace just so it's easier for you guys to see i'm just going to change my uh, workspace a little bit um, viewport window here to side you guys don't have to do that at all it's just what I'm gonna do. So here, I have my default cube in the 3D viewport. I'm gonna select it, so make it active. And then come over here and click new, just to get a new um, node network here added. So what we'll do, if you want to optionally, it's always good to be organized, is come up here, just double click on geometry nodes. Uh, let's just call it um, DNA. Yeah, it's very creative naming here. And um, I'm almost curious what DNA stands for. I'm gonna quickly have a look at it. So it stands for dioxyribonucleic acid. Sounds pretty cool. Might just grab that. There we go, now we've got a name there. Anyway, let's actually get into the tutorial. Um, let's go ahead and we're gonna go shift A, search and get a spiral. Get a curve primitive spiral, there we go. And let's just take this guy and plug it into the geometry group output, like so. And with this spiral here, let's come in here and just so you can see nice and close, let's take the rotations, I guess we can leave this at two. We could probably leave the resolution at 32 as well. But let's have a look. Um, we want these, the top height and the end height to be the same. So let's just kind of make it one here as well. So you can see it's not wider at the top than at the bottom. We don't want like a taper. And then with the height, let's try something like maybe 12 meters. Mm, bit short, maybe let's go for like 14. Yeah, I think 14 meters is a kind of good height here. And now we have sort of like one of the helix strands, right? But it's a double helix. That's what makes DNA DNA. So what we want to do is we want to go Shift A, search. Let's just get a transform geometry. Let's just plug this into the transform geometry. And then Shift A, search. Let's just get a join and get a join geometry. Place it on here and then plug this transform geometry into here. Now they're both here, but they're perfectly on top of each other. So in the viewport, it doesn't look like it. So what we need to do is come here to the transform geometry. And let's just come here to the Z and rotate it 180 degrees so it's opposite to the other one. Now we have our double helix over here. Pretty cool. So what I'm going to do, just to kind of keep things clean and organized, um, I'll, just, I'll just minimize this transform geometry, kind of make it smaller, and I'll minimize the join geometry, kind of bring it in close like so. And then what we want to do is we want to make all the little spokes, if that's what you want to call them, that run between these two. And there's a sort of semi simple way to do this that's not too complicated so what we want to do is we actually want to come here to the transform geometry this is drag on it and let's just resample that we're going to get a resample curve so type in resample curve so from this transform geometry we got the resample curve and because it's just going to be a straight curve we only need two points there's no need to give it anything more than two points so we're going to give it two points it's not going to be bending like the helix part here. And so we can actually see this. What we want to do is we want to grab this join geometry and go shift T to duplicate, place it on here. And let's just drag that curve into here as well. And now you can see here we have this line running along here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and duplicate this transform geometry, place it on this cable here, open it up. And we want to make the X one meter. Let's just get rid of this 180, set it back to zero. That'll kind of place it right in the center, as you can see there. And what we can do now, we can instance along this straight line here, which is what we tried to make here, just sort of just straight line going up in the middle. So what we'll do is we're going to simply go shift a search and get an instances, get an instances on points, place it on here. And now all we want to instance is just a curve line running across. So let's just grab the instance here, drag on it. Let's just type in curve line, grab a curve line. 
And now you can see we have a curve line actually here at the top and at the bottom, which is what you'd expect. So we want there to be at least, you know, let's just say maybe 28 or 30 spokes going up like this. So I guess what we could do, we, I was gonna actually add in a resample curve here, but what we might actually be able to do is just come over here to our resample curve here in the beginning and just set that to a count of 30. And now you can see we have all of these guys like this. But now we need to align their rotation to this helix here. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna come here to instances on points and we're gonna grab the rotation here. We're gonna drag on it and we're just gonna type in align. And let's go align rotation to vector. Let's just change it to Y because we want it to rotate it along the Y. And let's just change it from auto pivot to a Z like that. And now we just need to sample the curve, the helix here, so it knows where to align itself to. So that's really simple. Just go shift A, search and get a sample and get a sample curve. Let's just plug the tangent, which is what we're gonna be using and plug that into the vector and then simply come up to this first uh, transform geometry and just drag from that socket and drag it here into the curve like so. And so it knows that we're working with a spline parameter. We just wanna simply drag this value here and type in spline and parameter and now it's gonna evaluate it according to the spline parameter. And we're gonna just take the factor. Oops, I, I plugged it into the wrong thing not to value the factor, there we go. Now they're actually almost right, but we just need to come here to the curve line and we wanna actually just take that and let's give it minus one here like that. And now they're kind of rotated the right way, but they're just out a little bit too much. So what we need to bring them back in is we'll just offset it here on the X over here and bring it in by positive one. And obviously just get rid of the one here on the zero, which is kind of what's throwing it off. I mean, make it zero on the Z, that's what I was meant to say. Uh, I think I figured out what I did wrong here. I made this mistake again. So, you know how we came here to the resample and we made it a count of 30? Just forget about it. Let's leave that at two and just simply duplicate that resample, place it after this transform and then make it 30. And now it's gonna be where we need it to be, okay? So I made that mistake before, forgot about it. So that's what we need to do. I was right about that in the first place. And so now this is the setup that we have. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just minimize this resample curve, this transform geometry over here this resample over here. I'm gonna just try and keep things minimal. I'll close that and just kind of close all these guys. And these align and cur sample curve and spline parameter, I'll just kind of put them close together. And just tuck them up here against the instances on points. And now this is kind of what we have. So you can see here, a relatively neat layout here. So now we've actually created the hard parts. From here, it gets a lot simpler. Now we want to actually turn it into something physical. So let's come over here. We're going to go shift a search and let's get a curve to mesh. Place it on here. Let's sweep it with a curve circle. So we're going to drag on here and type in curve circle. And let's bring it down to a resolution of 12. And let's just bring down that radius like so. Maybe even a little bit more. Yeah, this could already be kind of like a cool DNA if you wanted to go with that. But we can make it even better by dragging this up and going shift a search and let's just go distribute and distribute points on faces, place it over here. And then let's just go shift a search and let's get a instances, instances on points, place it afterwards. And then let's just come here to the instances and drag and make it an ICO. And let's just bump up that subdivision and bring down that radius a little bit. And we'll randomize that in a second anyway with the scale. But for now, let's just change this from random distribution to Poison disk. And then we have a way of stopping this intersection because now you can see the intersects. If we bring up this distance, this is showing us how far apart they can be. And we can also bring up the max density like that. Now, they're all the same size and that kind of makes it look a little bit ugly. So what we can do is very simply just come over here to our instances on points grab the scale and just type in random and this is random value that and we don't want a vector we just want it to be a float so it's not doing it on any specific vector now it's all evenly like that so if it comes out just plug it back into the scale like that and we don't want a minimum of zero so let's make it like 0.3 on the, min the minimum and the max we'll leave it one and we still need a bit more density so over here to distribute points and faces let's make it like 120 or maybe even like 400 just really drag that up and there we have it. We now have a cool looking DNA. Um, I might just come here to the radius, just drag it down just a little tiny bit. Maybe bring the min distance down here just so you get a little bit more packing happening here with the molecules. And that looks really cool. Now we have a DNA, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna come over here. Now let's go to our materials. Let's just 
it should by default have a material, let's just call it DNA. And let's come over here, shift A, search and get a set, and get a set material, place it on here, and then come to the material and give it a DNA. And for me, I'm just gonna go to my render engine and change it to cycles. If you have a GPU, I always recommend you use it if you have one. And then under the render, let's just go to max samples and I'll make that 45 for me right now. Now, to make this look really cool, what we'll do is we'll go over to our shading workspace. I'll go into the camera view and I'll just kind of move my camera in close here. I'm just gonna go Z and go rendered. I'm gonna select the DNA and now we have our DNA material here. And I'm just gonna go shift A search and get a geometry input. And let's just take it per um, randomized per island. And I don't think this is gonna work and I'll tell you why in a second. The reason it's not randomizing it is because we haven't realized each one of these spheres as an instance. So let's just quickly pop back to geometry nodes. And I'll just go over here, past the instances on points and go shift A search and get a realize and get a realize instances and place it on here. And now if I go Z and go rendered, you're gonna see we have that randomized per island because it has to recognize each one of these instances as an individual realized instance. Otherwise they're all just being referenced as the exact same thing. So now we can come here, shift A search and get a shade and get a set shade smooth as well. And now that's looking cool. So let's jump back to our shading workspace. At this point, shift A search and get a ramp. Just grab a color ramp and place it on here. And then you can drag this together, make it whatever color you want, and maybe drag this one here. You know, be as creative as you want. Now we have this cool looking DNA. So what I'm gonna do, is gonna simply hit back to my layout, I'm gonna go into camera view, in fact, I might just go into the front view and go shift A, add in a new camera and kind of move it back. And this is not really what I'm focusing on for this tutorial, but I will quickly show you. You can kind of random, um, scale it and bring it in like this. You know, maybe put the DNA here, maybe duplicate one and put it here in the back and maybe duplicate one here and kind of bring it closer to the camera. You know, stuff like that. Just be creative with your layout of the DNA. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and go Z and go rendered. Grab this light. You could always increase the strength and just put it somewhere here off to the side. And then what you could do is go to your camera, select it and go to your camera properties and go depth of field. Click on this eyedropper and then select the middle DNA and then bring that f-stop way down. Now it's got a sort of nice soft focus. And if you wanted to, you know, go ahead, add in the background. And at this point, you know, I'm just going really fast. I'm just showing you what you could do. This is not really what the tutorial is meant to focus on as much. And now you can add in like a backdrop and kind of give it a color. You know, be as creative as you want, but this is kind of just a simple way to make DNA. So I'll just kind of save this and that's it, you know. You can work more in the materials and the layout. In fact, I'll just quickly show you, this is the exact same thing. I haven't done anything different here. Um, you know, what I showed you is exactly what I did here in my original. Um, obviously, I just spent a little bit more time finessing it. I even added in a little bit of volume metrics and some atmosphere and just mess around with the lighting. I made them a little bit more shiny with the materials. At this point, it's up to you to make it look however you want. You don't have to copy everything I do. Just make it your own unique scene, use your own colors, your own materials. It's really simple from that point. If you can make the DNA, you've already done the hard part. So I will be uploading this to my Patreon and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.